What's up YouTube? It is your boy JB and we are here with review for The Shy. Season 4, episode 2. The episode is titled Cooley High. So, before we get into this review, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on my channel and you like what I do and you come back every week, why are we going on this date and you not pay for the meal that you invited me on, you know? Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else and share this video. And with that being said, let us get into this episode review, shall we? All right, you guys, let's start this episode up. We're going to talk about Emmett, Jada, and Darnell and Tiffany. Yep, let's start that off. All right, you guys, so Emmett. Once again, Emmett's conscious is eating him alive and is eating him in his sleep. So he's sleeping and he's having his dream that Tiffany is chasing him around the house with a butcher's knife trying to kill him because she found out that he fucked Dom. So he wakes up and she's like, is everything okay? Emmett can't really say what's going on at this point. So then we see Jada. So Jada and her, and her guy, I forget what his name is, you know, they wake up together and he's asking Jada about taking her to her class reunion. She was like, I don't want to look like Angela Bassett and, you know, how Stella got her groove back. So she's at this point, she's worried about what people will say or think about her in this, you know, relationship with whatever. Well, situation, relationship, whatever they're in. And she says it. She says, I don't really know what we are at this point to each other. And, you know, if Jay is going to be with him, you got to let the naysayers say whatever they're going to say and just be with this this kid with well, this guy so once again like i said emmett's guilt his guilt is eating him up so we see as tiffany she's getting ready to go do a drop of you know some weed she's going to the studio he's like what studio I'm going to she says i'm going to such and such studio. he says uh-uh they shoot over there like what they rap about in their songs they're actual about it she says i'm going to the studio to meet dreezy dreezy who uh, i don't know who that is if you guys know, is that an actual artist? Don't know, I'm not from Chicago. So she's getting ready to go over there. So then we see Darnell and Emmett in a thrift store that Keisha's working at, and Emmett is talking to Darnell. He's thinking that Darnell is listening to him, but unfortunately, Darnell is on that damn Bluetooth talking to somebody else. So then he asks Keisha, do they have a men's section? She says, yeah, it's over there. He says, do you have a discount as well? I'm like, Oh my God, that took me back to the time that I worked at Goodwill. I mean, the stuff in Goodwill is already cheap as hell. And, and people are like, is there a discount on that? Is there a discount on that? Is there a discount on that? I'm like, and I like one person I asked, I'm like, what do you want me to do? Give it to you for free, basically? And she started laughing. She's like, no, I don't want you to give it to me for free. I'm like, then what do you want a discount? What is a discount going to help? Like, if it is $2, what kind of discount you want? Like some, like even the little bitty things, like some, some of the smaller things, like some of that stuff. Like I had one thing, somebody came up to me and it was something that was 75 cents. They're like, is it a discount on that? I'm like, what is a discount on 75 cents? Are you serious? Really? But people do it in the thrift store nonetheless. So then Emmett is talking to Keisha about Tiffany. He says, she says that you need to tell her. He says, you know, I am. Um, so then he asked her, how is she? She says she's stressed out with the baby and she doesn't know, you know what to do or who to give the baby to. So then we later see Tiffany as Tiffany is dropping off some weed to Corey Hard Hardick's character and he's asking her, I was married life. And she says, oh, it's okay. He was like, the way you talk and sound like you bored with that nigga. And I'm like, exactly. I mean, I get it. Emmett and Tiffany have been together for a minute and just because you get married, Things are not going to just change and just become better. I got that. But the way she said it, it was like, okay, are you questioning it? And I know that, like I said, she and Emmett have been through some things, but she just did not sound enthused whatsoever. So then we later see Emmett. So Emmett and Tiffany, they are having sex. I'm like, I thought you were going to tell her that you had sex with Dom. Now, while he's having sex with Tiffany, he hears Darnell in his head and he keeps talking to Darnell. And she's like, who the fuck are you talking to? Like, what are you talking about? And then he eventually, once they finish, he tells her that he fucked Dom. So she got up and she walked out. So then we see Jada. We see Jada. We see her boyfriend, 
we see Nina and um, Dre and we see Darnell. They all show up to the class reunion. They're in costume. I'm like, why y'all in costume? Y'all graduated in 1998. That's neither here nor there. So then we meet one of Jada's frenemies and we find out that her little dude has been, you know, giving back, giving pap happy endings and massages to, you know, other people besides her. And then we see Tiffany. So Tiffany goes over to Corey's crib and she has sex with my mom. Oh, payback. I don't know how I feel about Tiffany or um, Emmett at this point. Whatever. Um, now, I'm going to actually wrap them up. Jada. So Jada, we saw the scene after where she and her little dude was in bed. And he was touching her breast. And he noticed that there was a lump. She's like, oh, it's been there for, um, for a few years. You know, I go get it checked up on every birthday. He, she was like, do you want me to go get it checked on? He says, please. She's like, okay. So then we see her in the episode. At the end of the episode, she went and got it checked. And it actually turns out that she has cancer. So they want to run a biopsy to see what stage the cancer is in. I'm like, oh, good God of hell. Let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys. Next, let's talk about Papa and Maisha. It wasn't really a lot with them in this episode. So... We see Papa and Maisha, they are at his crib. So Papa is soundproofing his room because he wants to start up a podcast. So then Maisha asks him, why don't you just rent out a studio? You know, that would be cool if I rented out a studio. So, nope, don't want to do it. But he says he doesn't have that kind of money. She says, well, you could if you asked Emmett to pay you under the table. And he was like, no, you know, Emmett is doing good with his life and I don't want to be that man's downfall. So then, you know, they start talking about the situation that happened with Jake and um, Jake and Kevin. He says, you know, he wished he could have done more in that situation. Oops, excuse me, y'all. So then Maisha says, well, who's your first guest going to be on the podcast? He says, Van Jones. She was like, really? Van Jones? He was like, yeah. You know, he's like, you know, I DM'd him. He did respond to it. She was like, yeah, Papa, Van Jones is not, is not coming. So Papa got upset with her because, you know, she like he was like, damn, you know, I'm telling you that I got Van Jones to come to my podcast and you shitting on it. Like, you're supposed to be my queen. Like, what happened to, you know, Coretta Martin? I was a Maisha, Papa. I get it. Dream big. But Van Jones coming to your podcast, don't really see it happening. And unfortunately, it didn't happen because Van Jones... At the same time of this podcast, and he is going to go and be on the Red Table Talk. And, you know, Maisha was like, you know what, Papa, I do apologize for not believing that Van was coming. He says, but he didn't come. She says, but I could have been a little bit more supportive. But she says, you know what, I got something that'll, you know, make up for that. So then we see that Maisha got on the microphone and she spit some little bars. I'm like, okay, Maisha, come on with the bars. I was feeling it. So yeah, that's it for Papa and Maisha. So now we're going to move over to Rose, Duda, Trig, and Imani. All right, you guys. So the episode with Trig and Imani. We see Trig. He's at the crib. He's cooking breakfast. And Imani comes in. She's asking him how does he feel about lemon pepper wings being on the menu. He says, cool. So she asks him, are you okay? He's like, she's like, he was like, yeah. You know, he's like, it's just a temporary fish. She says, you know, you did what you had to do. Talk about that cop. Now, in last week's episode, I would have thought Trig beat that man to, to a bloody pulp, like to death. But we'll talk about that. So then we see Jake. So Jake is packing to go on a college tour. And then Trig comes into his room. Actually, mine was in there first. And there were some condoms in his bag. He thought, those are not my condoms. She says, I know. I put them there for you. I'm not telling you to go off to be, have sex. But if you are going to do it, at least be safe with whatever you do. So then Trig is asking Jake, are you okay when going on a trip? And Jake was like, yeah, I'm cool with it. It's not a big deal. You know, I, we want to move on with his life at this point. So then we see Duda. So Duda is watching the video. Um, so at this point, the DA has this video footage, but the DA hasn't done anything about the cop. So we see Duda, we see Rose, and we see Gemma's dad. So they're all talking. So Gemma's dad hands Duda a file. And, you know, while talking, Rose says, well, you know, it takes time with this Kate, with this kind of stuff. It takes time. So they're at the hospital and Duda actually goes into the room of the cop that beat up Jake. 
and um, he's still alive. I was like, wow, he's still alive. So I'm like, I guess at some point, Trey was like, you know what? I'm going to stop beating this man's ass. Now, here's what pissed me off. The cop tried to justify what he did to Jake. And do it out with this file. He's like, well, hmm, that's funny because you have a history of messing with African-American men. But like I said, he was trying to defend it. So then, you know, Duda, Rose, and Gemma's dad, they walk outside and the press is there. So Duda tells the press that he is firing that cop. So then we see Trigg. So Trigg is going to the jail, to a prison. He's picking someone up. We see the guy come out and it's Jason Weaver. His character he's portraying is named Shad. So Shad is going to be staying with Trigg and Imani. I got to look a few questions about that one. So then we see Rose. So Rose and Gemma's dad, they're watching the news. Now on the news, the pundits have their different viewpoints on what dude I did in firing the cop. There was another, there was a black guy there. That black guy was in defense of what dude I did. But then you got the two white people on the other side. They're trying to defend the cop and ask why would he fire him? I mean, the man was beating a kid. It's bad enough that we see the cops beating adults, but that is a kid. It's a kid. So, Rose, you can see her. She is seething. So, I'm like, okay, Rose, don't look too happy with Duda. I wonder, because you guys, in the first episode, remember, we saw in the back, in the flashback, Duda getting shot. I wonder if it's going to be Rose, Gemma's dad, or someone on someone that we're just not expecting that's going to shoot him. So then we find out that Duda has called a press conference and Rose says, well, you should not have done that. Like, you really shouldn't have done that. So at this um, press conference that he's having, he's telling them that he is defunding the police. I was like, oh, shit. They going to have your ass. Those white people going to have your ass. So then with Trigg, and Imani and Shad, they are having this big, huge party for him. And when Shad came in, he immediately started looking at Imani. And I was like, has he clocked her that she is trans or does he like that? Because I mean, he at one point he started flirting with her. I'm like, okay, so maybe he knows, maybe he doesn't, or maybe he's just flirting with her, I don't know. Now I will say Imani was not happy to find out that um, Shad is staying with them. All right, you guys, and then we see another scene. I really hope this is not going to be the theme of this season, triggering, because this scene with the guy at the at the corner store when the cops hemmed him up was trying to arrest him, and then at one point when he stood up, they pulled a gun on him. I really hope this is not going to be the theme of this season. So then to wrap up, Rose Duda them. Rose tells Duda, you really done fucked up. After all that we did to get here, this is what you do? Like, I didn't sign up for this. And he says, yes, you did. And he leaves. I'm, I'm confused. I'm like, what is going to happen? We know somebody going to shoot him, but who? Let's move on, you guys, and wrap up. All right, guys, let's wrap up. So, I think Jim is going to annoy the hell out of me this season. It's just give, She's just giving me that vibe. She didn't bother me so much last season, but this season, absolutely. So we see Kevin. So Kevin, in the beginning of the episode, he was on his phone, and Nina told him, get off his phone. So Kevin gave her some little lip, and Nina and Dre were like, you lucky that we are allowing you to use your phone with you coming in drunk and coming in high. So then, you know, he's getting ready for this college tour, they asked him, is he excited? He said, not really. So he's upset. He's going through because he's looking for some cheese puffs. Ooh, I want to go get some Cheeto puffs, just some Cheeto cheese puffs later today. So he, he's like, where are they? They were like, you know what? He's like, he's, he's upset about Keisha eating it. So then we see Gemma and him. Like I said, she's going to get on my nerves. So she's doing this video and she's talking about, you know, I want to go to college for this and then I want to get my master's in this and I want to do my PhD for this and so and so and so and so. What about you, Kevin? What do you want to do? He says, I don't know. She says, I can't post that, Kevin, because it's going to look like you're not my equal. Little girl, y'all are so 
for me, when I was in high school, we didn't start doing college tours until you could do it just, we could do it our sophomore year, but it was really mostly your junior year. It was end of your sophomore year, going into your junior year, and then all of your junior year and your senior year. That's how it was at my school. Actually, no, it was junior and senior year, really and truly. I think for me, it was different for me because I was ahead of my class at one point. And when I first started high school, I was behind on my, I was behind on my class because my whole freshman year I skipped, but I went to summer school that year and I got caught up. And actually when I got caught up, I surpassed my class. Yep, uh, yep, that, that summer of 04, I actually surpassed my class. So when I went to 10th grade, I had enough, I, had a, I was maybe a few credits shy of being a junior. And then my junior year, I was, well, I had already, because I went to summer school each summer so I went to summer school every year from freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior year of high school. So the summer, actually that's what it was, the summer of my sophomore year, I went back, I went to summer school, and I got even further ahead of my class, and that pushed me over, you know, that pushed me over. So by my junior year, I was able to graduate if I wanted to, but I chose not to, I just wanted to hang out with my friends. All of my senior year, I didn't do anything. But yeah, she does, you know, she's like, they're not equally yoked. She wants them, to, she wants people to know they're equally yoked. And I'm like, little girl, y'all are kids. What the hell? So then Kevin asks Jake how was his arm. He says, oh, you know, the doctor says my arm will be fine in about two days. So then this little white girl, Dakota, comes up and she asks, you know, she's talking about Jake. She's like, you know, I'm, you know, you're my hero for standing up to that racist cop. She's like, how, you know, what, how is your arm? He says, oh, you know, they said it's going to be about a couple of months. She's like, you know, black lives will always matter to me. You know, let me know how I can make it better for you. She's rubbing his thigh. I'm like, Jake, 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 be smart. Use a condom with this little, this little um, white girl. So the, so Keisha, the job at the thrift store, I'm sorry. If I was Keisha, I know she probably needs that job. But with that boss, I would have quit because I don't like somebody. I don't like somebody that's like that, like always over me hovering. I hate that. If you pay me to do a job, if you show me how to do the job, trust that I know what I'm doing and leave me the hell alone. Like I don't like, I don't like people like that. I don't like micromanagers. I do not. So then with Gemma, like I said, Gemma's gonna annoy me. So Gemma went from knowing what she wants to do with college to talking about college being a scam, which a lot of people say that this is scam, and we, and we, I mean, we look at the likes of Bill Gates and um, who else is it? I know Bill Gates right off the top of my head, and Steve Jobs. That's it. They don't have college degrees, but look at them running these big, huge companies. Like I said, Jim is just getting on my damn nerves. Now, Jake, I hope you use a condom when you and Little Dakota was in that bathroom. I really hope y'all was using a condom. So Kevin found him and asked him what happened with him and Dakota. He says, "Mind your business." So then Jake was like, hey, you see them kids over there playing that game? Why don't you go get in there on that, on that bet? So Kevin goes over there with the, little kid, with the kids and he plays the game and he starts winning and he starts taking their money. One boy's like, that was my money for Coke. I was like, well, maybe you don't need the Coke that badly. And the fact that they were able to peer pressure Kevin into doing mine, I'm like, no, Kevin. And then Kevin got drunk and high and he got sent home from the trip. I'm like, serves you right. Serves you right, Kevin. Hanging out with the wrong crowd. Please let that be a one-time thing for Kevin. But you guys, that's the episode. It was a good one. Let me know what you guys thought about it. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else. And share this video. Until the next time, stay safe, you guys. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Wear a mask or not. But be safe in what you do. Be blessed. And I will catch you guys in the next one. I don't know what's next. Oh, tomorrow. We will be doing what show comes on tomorrow? The haves and the have-nots, the final season starts. All right, you guys, that's it. I'll see you guys later. Bye.